Good morning, fellow privateers, and welcome to the week ahead preview from uh, your friends at Privateer FX. Not a whole lot came out over the weekend. Uh, pretty quiet on the uh, the tweeting front from uh, our fearless leader, Donald Trump. Um, we do have a busy week ahead, however. Uh, you know, the market is only just opening now here. Uh, you know, Auckland and Australia, but uh, you know, so nothing really groundbreaking here on the open. But <clears throat> uh, again, we do have a busy week ahead. We'll get to some of that. Let's take a look at the charts real quick. Uh, the dollar uh, did not close on the lows. Here's a dollar index. This is where we look at the weeklies. But we are approaching some significant historical lows all the way back down to uh, 2014. The target for this, this down move is uh, around 88 cents um, on the dollar index. And uh, we're, not, we're not far from there. We got down to 88.50 last week. So we'll be watching that 88 handle uh, very closely. Uh, the Australian dollar, we, we had this double top that we talked about earlier last week. We pierced it slightly, but, you know, we've also had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven straight up weeks where it would open on the lows of the week and close pretty much near the highs of the week. And that happened again last week. Not one really to be fading. They were above the 200-week moving average. There's some shorter-term overbought uh indicators saying it might be a little bit overdone. Euro dollar, we closed off the highs. We got up to 125.40, closed to 124.30, so it did have a, a little bit of a pullback. Um, same with cable. Cable is off the highs of the week. Kiwi still relatively, I mean, it's been up seven weeks in a row, but it's uh, it has closed kind of mid-range of the week. Um, that was after that weak Kiwi CPI. So that, that's trading weak relative to some of the other currencies. And here's the dollar yen chart, which, you know, this is a pretty ugly close, 108.56. Got down to as low as 108.30 on Friday. The next target is this old low, 107.38. This is the, the, the lows of 2017. And we are expecting a retest of that before we get a bounce. And that could actually lead to a kind of a, a broad dollar bounce. I, I do think dollar yen needs to test that 107 handle before the overall dollar um, starts to uh, correct some of this recent weakness. Take a look at the daily dollar yen. Again, you know, we did have close to an outside reversal lower day, close just above, thir uh, just above Thursday's lows, 108.50. This chart looks pretty ugly, and there's no reason we can't get back down to these 2017 lows. Um, again, not much news over the weekend. We could take a look at, uh, well, let's pop over to cryptos, because some of the Cryptos are up a little bit over the weekend. Uh, Ethereum back up close to 1,200. Um, it's had a nice bounce from 900. Ripple, it's had a good bounce as well. And Bitcoin's back up to 11,500, but not not as strong as some of these other altcoins, which is still my call is that you want to be short Bitcoin and long some of these others. Ethereum and Ripple being my favorites. Um, as far as the week ahead, we, we have Trump's State of the Union. He'll be speaking about infrastructure, America first, uh, you know, bragging about the recent strength in the stock market. Uh, average hourly earnings this Friday will be extremely important, um, part of a uh, non-farm payroll number. Uh, you know, we are watching out for inflation. Um, central banks, we have the FOMC. We also have uh, the RBA, the RBNZ, and the Bank of England is, is next week. Um, 
So we do have some central bank meetings coming up, and um, you know th th those should spur some volatility. As far as actual data points, we've got uh, we've got German CPI, we've got Eurozone GDP, Australian CPI, and Eurozone CPI, US ADP, ISM, and we also have the China cakes and uh, PMI, and then the end the week with the U.S. non-farm payroll numbers. So plenty of data points. Uh, you know, volatility has been has been uh, picking up since the start of the year. We don't really see that changing. Um, as long as we're seeing higher yields globally, we think it's a, uh, we, we, you know, there, there are good opportunities intraday. Uh, the momentum trades are working. Some of our break trades have worked pretty well to start the year. And uh, I don't see that changing anytime soon. It is January. A lot of money comes back to the markets in January as everyone's P&L resets to zero. Um, and we expect this to, to carry into February and, uh, and uh, in March even. So fingers crossed that we have this heightened volatility is here to stay for a few months take full advantage of it while you can because ultimately we will come into a very quiet period which is typical of FX uh, one thing I read over the weekend which is interesting uh, the Millennials are um, some of the their most their most crowded trades from the Millennial investment community is the cryptocurrencies obviously and then the cannabis investments uh, leading the final leg of this bull market and individual investors are finally diving in. There was a Wall Street Journal article about that. So it's interesting. This one in massive tears for them, just like in 2000 when pets.com and the like all imploded in a uh, spectacular fashion. So I don't see why this is any different. 18 years later. Good luck trading. Expecting kind of a quiet session in Asia with no data. And, uh, you know, put your 10 hats on because I think the uh, we could get some volatility this week with all the data and the central bank meetings. Good luck. Cheers.